This is the Harrods Department Store website. It's a typical two-dimensional website. When you look at a site like this, it's a one-to-one -one experience. You're not aware of anybody else that's looking here. And to move around, you, you click on page to page. And here we're looking at the furniture page. And if I wanted to buy one of these based on these little images, I'd then go to the purchase page. Now, imagine instead of that, that you're actually walking into a department store. Here we're in a representation of Kensington in London. Um, I could actually jump on a bus or, or go down the tube and come out in another part of Mayfair. Um, and this is typical of Second Life. And here we have a representation of Harrods. Uh, actually, it's a work in progress at the moment, which is why there's nothing uh, been put on the counters here. But uh, I'm now going to walk into a furniture store in Second Life to give you an idea. And as you see here, we have various kitchen appliances uh, and setups. Um, Notice the detail of the carpet and the wood grain. Um, I can actually interact with the various objects here, like the uh, cooker. I can switch the uh, rings on. Um, I can open the fridge door. I can to see how the shelves are laid out, if this is uh, suitable for my requirements. And although I'm here, and this is uh, called an avatar, uh, my wife could be somewhere else in the world and through broadband connection could actually be here with me and we could be discussing uh, the layout and the uh, various furniture that's here, uh, whether we like this style of wood, for instance. And if I saw a whole group of people in another part of this store, I could walk over there and see what they're looking at. Maybe there's a special offer on or something like that which will catch our attention. So it's a much more interactive. Uh, now we're on um, a different part of uh, Second Life. This is an island, a business park, and I'm just going to zoom out a bit like Google Maps so you can get an idea of how big uh, Second Life is. All these little diamond shapes are islands, um, and every month about another thousand islands are added to the Second Life landscape. And I'm going to zoom in now to the original part of Second Life, which was called the mainland, just to give you an idea of the sort of terrain and, and how big it is. And these green dots that you can see are actually individuals that are in Second Life at this moment in time. And I could click on any one of those and, and go and you know, see what they're doing. Uh, as we zoom in, you'll start to see the terrain come. You can see uh, roads and rivers. Um, in the top left-hand corner here, you can see there's a harbour with some boats in there. And each one of these squares is the same size as an island. We're now walking through the business park, and I'm going to show you a few different companies that are here to give you an example of the different facilities that are available. The first store we're going to walk into is Phoenix uh, Film and TV. Um, upstairs they have a cinema where they can show previews of films to their customers who could be anywhere uh, in the world. Um, and I'm going to show you now some of the graphic capabilities. This is a sales brochure. And as you can see, I can zoom right into this. I can open the pages and go right in and read the text. So not everything in Second Life has to be uh, magnified so you can read it on the screen because you can zoom in very close. And anybody walking into this store could take away a free copy of this document. So that's one example of passing information to people. And you'll notice on the walls as we walk past, there's various posters, and I'll come back to that. So now we're going to look at um, another store. This is um, Macmillan's Cancer Support, who had a special uh, day event uh, called the World's Biggest Coffee Morning. And as you can see here, the whole theme is coffee. There's coffee bags, there's a coffee fountain. These sugar cubes are actually seats. Um, and we had a Brazilian guitarist that was playing live music into Second Life. Um, here I'm clicking on this poster, and that takes me directly to the relevant page on a website. So that indicates the uh, connectivity between Second Life and uh, normal websites. Uh, and as we walk through, um, at the back here, there's a garden. And this enabled people to sit down and talk anonymously about cancer issues. Um, because one thing about characters in Second Life is effectively that they're, they're anonymous. Now we've just gone upstairs, and here they have a boardroom. We're just going to go into the boardroom. And they, they are spread all around the UK. And they, from their own homes, log on to Second Life and actually sit around this table. Their characters sit around this table and have discussions. Um, the last thing they looked at was this promotional video. And that's another thing with Second Life is that you can stream uh, video in. And everybody can watch the same video or everybody can watch different videos. It just depends how, how you set that up. So we're just going to walk now to the front area. And here. Uh, they have uh, effectively a vending machine on, on the wall. It's a poster, but you click left and right, you see different products, and then you go to the website, then you can buy that product, and this was their Christmas catalogue. They had a very successful event in Second Life. Um, they raised the same amount of money when it was transferred into pound sterling uh, in Second Life on the one-day event as they did in real life, so they were very happy with uh, what they achieved in Second Life. 
Uh, as we walk past this big coffee cup here on the right, um, that's where people made donations and um, got free gifts as a result. The next area we're going to look at is the Oasis store. Um, Oasis, the rock band, launched a new DVD uh, last November and they ran for two weeks a 15 minute preview in Second Life, two weeks before the actual launch and about 1500 Oasis fans signed up to come into Second Life just to watch that um, film. They also collected virtual merchandise like uh, Oasis t-shirts. This store is a healthcare company, it's a knicker block, it's a stop smoking product. Um, there's l this is really uh, an information uh, area. Lots of posters on the wall that detail the benefits of giving up cigarettes and um, things that, that happen to you if you don't stop smoking. Um, and also we're going to have a look here at video and the difference here is that the um, video is in 12 different languages and the character that walks into the store can actually choose the language that they want to listen to. So as you see we're walking over to this uh, poster, we're going to click initially on English, just move the mouse and you'll see that there's a film being played. <laughs> Thank you for purchasing the Nico Block Pack. And then if somebody else walks in, they can click on, uh, say, French, and they'd watch it in French, and the guy that clicked English, he'd be watching it in English, so that the video is actually independent of each other. So you can use a store like this for a promotion and information. And as we walk past, you'll see a sign here that says special price three for the price of two for Second Life residents. The next store we're going to walk into is an example of where Second Life is used for prototyping. This is an engineering company. Um, they make a special valve for use in the oil industry and there's posters on the wall that if you click on that, that will go to the website. Um, but we've used the design tools in Second Life to actually build a representation of that. So people that are knowledgeable about um, how valves and pumps work in the oil industry can actually have a closer inspection of the various uh, components of that. This is another use of Second Life. This is a store, this is T Mobile, that designed a prototype of a new store layout for the UK and invited their staff to log into Second Life and give their opinion as to what they thought of this new store layout. And another example of the graphic capability will we'll zoom right into this uh, mobile phone um, and you'll just notice the degree of detail that you can actually uh, produce. It's again, a, another example of not needing uh, everything to be uh, sort of maximum size so that you can see it from a distance. Okay, the avatar's now moving into uh, an art gallery, which is interesting. This is a, a lady from St. Ives who specialised in uh, street musicians in New Orleans, and her paintings were done just two weeks before Hurricane Katrina. So her pictures are the last representation, the last pictures of a lot of the street musicians that never came back. Um, she sells pictures from her real art gallery. Um, people click on images here and if the picture is available they can buy an original or they can buy uh, copies, prints. Uh, also we're streaming live music from uh, a New Orleans radio station to give this particular room uh, a, its appropriate atmosphere. In the centre of the island is a conference centre and all the companies that are resident on the island uh, have access to this uh, for seminars um, and uh, other meetings that uh, they may want to have. This area is a interview area, recording area. Notice on the screen at the back it says slcn.tv, that's Second Life Cable Network TV. They have about 20,000 screens throughout the whole of Second Life plus their own website and they, they record interviews and programs that are broadcast. Um, Reuters uh, display information in Second Life. They actually have a full-time employee in Second Life reporting on various business stories uh, that are going on. Sky News is another company that broadcasts into Second Hi Life there. and well, there's entertainment, news weather news and news channels which is probably about South five minutes behind uh, real life as the amount of time it takes to stream in. There's lots of magazines, you can see uh, magazine vendors here um, of fashion and business stories and other items of interest. This area is the seminar area, there's about 40 seats set up at the moment, but that can be changed, the configuration can be changed. Uh, and you can watch videos and PowerPoint presentations. And in the centre of the, the conference centre is the reception area. 
Now, this is actually manned by uh, another avatar here, this, this lady sitting on the chair, but she's actually uh, run by a computer. Uh, she's uh, an artificial intelligence, or she's connected to an artificial intelligence website uh, and can hold quite a detailed conversation about the location that she's in, as well as second life in general and, and normal world aspects in general. And she can hold quite a good conversation and she can tell you about products uh, that your store sells, um, who the key characters are, that type of thing. Here we're asking about um, are there any jobs available and she's telling me to fill the application form in. Uh, again, just to show you uh, yet another time how we can zoom in on the detail of uh, small items. Uh, this is a certificate to show that uh, New Business Horizons is a member of the London Chamber of Commerce. Okay, our next stop is a, a bigger project. This is one for Universal Music Group uh, that is actually four islands put together. Uh, we're just on the beach area. There's, there's a number of non-business areas uh, which was to create uh, uh, an interesting atmosphere for their staff. Um, this is a you are here type map where you can click and go to different places. But again, we'll just zoom out so you can get an idea of the size of the uh, island here. It's four segments. When you first arrive, you're in the training area. Uh, and this is because most people that were coming in, there's about uh, there was 150 people that came in, were new to Second Life. So the first thing that they um, passed through was a self-paced training area that um, gave them the basic skills for navigating and for communication. Uh, and the screen that tells them how to run the video actually housed a welcome message from their boss. Uh, and I think it might be actually helpful if we listen to that for a few minutes to get the feel of uh, a real person talking to his staff. Welcome to the first Universal Music USM virtual conference. This is a first for the music industry that people around the world we meet in one room. In this magic island, you will be able to talk between each other, interact whatever you are in Holland, in France or in Australia. There are four different sections within this world. The first one is dedicated to catalogue and campaign. The second one to TV compilation. The third one to DVD and broadcast. And the fourth one to business development. Please do not hesitate to join any of them. Within these sections, you will be able to watch PowerPoint presentation, videos of forthcoming releases, and you will be able to talk to any of your friends at UMGI at any time Please do not hesitate to call the helpline. It's a 24-7 helpline. We'll be here to answer any question or issue you may have. I really hope you enjoy this experience. This is a first. We love it. We have fun doing it. But more importantly, it helps massively our communications. I wish you a wonderful day. And let's meet at the bar as soon as you've done. About 150 staff from Universal Music Group from all around the globe uh, came into Second Life to attend this uh, virtual conference. Ordinarily, they would have met in a, a hotel somewhere in Europe, and obviously Universal saved the cost of airfares, accommodation, tra uh, entertainment, etc. Um, as well as the central ring, which is where we had the four presentations, there's four different wings. Um, but just have a look at now one of the presentations. Each manager uh, recorded a message to the people that are interested in his particular division. Hi, I'm Andrew Dorr, Marketing Director, USM, responsible for catalogue, TV marketing and licensing. And the character actually came to Second Life and stood at this lectern and would have about 15 to 20 people around him as he talked through these PowerPoint presentations. The people that uh, came into Second Life, they had two days to find an hour to come in at a time that was convenient to themselves to collect the information about all the new releases that were coming out the next quarter and to meet their colleagues from around the world. Um, each of the areas has a different theme. This is an office section. Uh, there's a boardroom table and Universal use this now for uh, meetings of people from uh, around the world. And in the centre, uh, is this converts into a stage and you can see there's seats around, there's 200 seats and there will be concerts, live concerts streamed into Second Life uh, in the Universal Arena. And we're just zooming out now just so you can get uh, an aerial view. So this was a snapshot of Second Life and some of its facilities and functionality that you could utilise for your own application. 
Second Life can be regarded as a three-dimensional website uh, where you interact with people, which could be anywhere in the world, uh, share information, uh, collaborate on different projects. Um, it's a channel for you to communicate with staff, customers, job applicants, and other interested parties that you want to reach in an innovative and stimulating way.